We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. AEW Unrestricted. Welcome in, folks. I'm Will Washington. And you know Aubrey Edwards is here. Hello. Today is a very special day here at AEW. Yes. Because we are celebrating the release of Who We Are, A Celebration of Excellence, Volume 2. Uh, this is a project that I'm very excited about, very excited to talk about. I was a part of the first one, and that was pre-me joining AEW, and I, that project meant so much to me. And to get to see the second one come together, and it feels even bigger than the first one, it, it's so cool, and it's, it's available now. Uh, you can check it out on all of your favorite platforms, all of your favorite music platforms that is available right now. But joining us today on AEW Unrestricted to talk about it, we've got the executive producer of the project, Mr. Mikey Ruckus. Hell yeah. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. And joining us right now is actually one of my favorite people in the world. And I was so glad that he got to be a part of this project. Um, he's actually got... Yeah, he's got some music on the project and hearing the song that he got to do. I'm, I'm really excited to talk to Victor Perry. Yes. Victor, you have uh, a track on the album with Josiah Williams uh, of Willow Nightingale. I heard it a little while ago, about a year ago. Yeah. And I remember her listening to it in the locker room and it was just like to watch her face light up at this song, Babe with the Power. First off, Mikey, how this all came together uh, the second time around. You know, with the first one, there was this kind of overwhelming feeling of the gravity and the the weight of what we were doing because it was a first in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. It was very important to have people from all walks of life within the Black community to come in and tell the stories of, of our AEW talent at that time. It meant so much just because it was so groundbreaking and, and being able to step back and, and let others create and tell the story of culture from their perspective. I wanted to see that happen again, but this time a little bit more of a refined approach where uh, we brought Rich Lotta in to produce probably 90% of the tracks that were on the album. And this time, as opposed to like this a little bit more of a serious tone with the first one, this one we kind of like lifted the gates up there's a party vibe. There's a real celebration that's happening from the, from the first track all the way to the end. You know, our first album, we had a couple of uh, performers on the, on the album itself, Sonny Kiss and Max Caster. This time we have Carly Bravo and our world champion Swerve Strickland on the track. The, the overarching feel of just vibe and party and celebration, it just feels so much bigger and so much more expansive. And there's just a joy that that rings throughout the entire album so I, you know it, it was good for me to be able to just take a step back again and just kind of oversee things and let rich kind of lay the foundation and then bring people in and tell those stories some of the uh some of the talent from the first uh album came in and then we've got some new ones as well victor is one of those and hearing his voice hearing his voice ring out on that chorus I stood up out of my chair and the first thing I did was I ran downstairs to show Mrs. Ruckus and she was like, y'all got a hit. Mm. <laughs> so overall, just a great vibe. And, and I'm really excited to see this finally hit daylight. Now, Victor being here, just so people who, who don't know uh, Victor, Victor, of course, uh, famous for the wrestling club, mm. not a gimmick, by the way. Victor is literally <laughs> in the classroom right now. It is summer school yep. time. <laughs> Uh, if you're watching the video version, <laughs> Victor, I, I want to talk about first off, um, getting to be a part of this project. Um, talk to me a little bit about your music background. Music has always been like my first love is music and wrestling. I never thought it would be possible to have a marriage between the two. I just never thought that my path would cross in the way that it has with wrestling. And so like being a part of this project is literally a huge honor. I remember when I was invited, I remember going to my calling my mom and dad and was like, yo, I'm going to do a project for wrestling. And it was like, this is what you wanted. And I was like, yeah, everything I've done for the, I would say, last seven, eight years has culminated to 
being part of this project, which is really, really cool. So, so I'm a little curious kind of how this all works because we have so many amazing talent coming in and doing all these different tracks. Victor, how did you get involved with specifically Willow's track? Mikey reached out. He was like, we got this dope track and we think you'd be great, have a great hook. And I was really nervous. So I was like, oh goodness, this is my first time working with <laughs> Mikey with anyone else, you know? And so I was just like, okay, I'm just going to approach it how I would approach anything that I've ever done. And so they sent over the track and I wrote like a hook, shared it with them. And they were like, yo, this is dope. And I shared my ideas, refined some of the lyrics, recorded it. They recorded their verses and we put it all together. It's really, it happened, I would say like what, in a week? Yeah. It was very fast. Bouncing with her purple kiss, running till they feel her bliss. Ain't no way that they're gonna stop her. Ain't with the power. Oh, oh, oh. Ain't with the power. And it really feels like Willow was almost the right person mm -hmm. for you specifically. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. she's of course come and visited the class. Uh, it feels like she's really important to your students and... And so for her to get to be a part of that, I think it, it just made perfect sense for you guys. Mm -hmm. And again, for her, uh, when she heard the track, I remember the day she heard the track and, th and that felt like a moment. And I thought that was really, really cool. Do, do you feel like Willow was uh, the right fit for, for you and especially for, for what you represent with the wrestling club? Most definitely. It was like easy. You know, it was one of the easiest songs I've ever written because I think we're similar. You know, uh, when I look at Willow, I see joy. I see, yep. she says this thing, um, always smile. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter, smile. And I think that's something that I preach in the classroom with my students. It's like, just smile. You know, you're going to get through it. You know, no matter how difficult it may seem in that present moment, it's temporary. And, you know, if you just put a smile on your face and just work through it, you're going to overcome it and become something even better. And so I think Willow and I, it was just the perfect synergy. And then when she came and visited the kids, it was literally, it was like, yo, <laughs> this was meant to be. That joy is something that the world is lacking. And I think it's important that it is shared in all spaces at every single chance you get an opportunity to share it. And so I'm just, that's an honor and grateful that I was able to be a part of this project, but also be a part of a project that tributes someone that I look up to who is Willow. Question for, for Victor, speaking of Willow and whatnot and coming to your classroom, uh, one of the things I love about Wrestling Club is that you're just presenting wrestling in such a positive way to a young audience and seeing the videos of your kids watching Osprey and Danielson and just losing their minds, right? It's so cool. Have they heard the track? And if not, like, are you going to, ooh, you have, okay. Are you going to share it with them? Yeah. One thing I've learned and one thing I've been really good at over the years is keeping the secret. And so, it's all about wrestling. You got to keep the secrets, man. Yeah. So I can't wait to share it with them, especially when we meet back up in like a month. Um, but even the kids that I have now who aren't part of the wrestling club just yet, I'm going to introduce it to them and show them like, look, this is a magic you can create uh, in wrestling. It's not just wrestling. It's so much more. Man, I love that. And uh, I love getting to talk with you. I love that you got to be a part of this project. Again, it is Who We Are, a celebration of excellence, volume two. It is available on all music platforms right now. You can find it on uh, Spotify. You can find it on Apple Music. You can find it on YouTube Music, wherever you get your music. Definitely check out Who We Are. It's available now. We've got so much more here on AEW Unrestricted coming up. We're going to be joined by Carly Bravo. And later on in the show, we're joined by producer Rich Lotta. All that right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. It ain't a game. Bravo in the building, what's the move? Uh -huh. yeah. After this, there's nothing left to prove. Uh -huh. She gonna be with us cause when the lose. Your girlfriend just won bad news and tattoos. Uh -huh. Bravo win the AEW Unrestricted, we are talking about who we are, volume two, and I am super stoked to have one of our amazing coworkers joining us with our other amazing coworker. We've got Carly Bravo, what who up? is on the track, but I want to start with Mikey and just have him talk about this track in particular. I was just putting Carly over before we even started, like, Bravo in the building, what it do? Hey. This is my favorite song on the entire album, and not to put anybody else underneath it but this this track right here this is a bump this is a vibe i got up out of my chair and did the little puerto rican old man dance when i heard it the first time like bravo really laid it down 
<laughs> and this man, I am so, so happy to have him on this album. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Bad news and tattoos, <laughs> Carly Bravo. Let's let's talk about it. Let let's talk about the track. First off, uh, when did you find out you were going to be a part of the album? They they contacted me and told me that they wanted me to they want to make a song for me, mm-hmm. and that's that's cool. But uh, you guys know me very well. You know, <laughs> who better for me than me? So I was like, all right, that's cool. But um, is it possible that? Maybe I think even Ruckus might have made the suggestion that like, hey, like maybe you actually do the actual song yourself from there. Kaboom. You know, (laughs) just went from there. I love talking about myself. So it was an easy thing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's great. Um, It's an energetic track. It's uh, I think it is very representative of who people know you to be. Mm -hmm. So what, what was it like getting to put this track together and getting to essentially so Talk happy. about yourself. You get to, you know, uh, uh, everybody wants to uh, eventually write their own biography, right? Yeah. But I think it's even better to get to immortalize yourself in a song. Yeah. How was that? How, how was that process getting to put that together? All right. So easy peasy for me. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but my history was I was a rapper. That's where I came mm. from. Rapping was my thing. I was real big in the South and Atlanta. I was like the, the guy out here. You know what I'm saying? So it, I just stopped doing it to wrestle. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, I moved on. It was a passion I had when I was a kid and now we're here. It was cool to like revisit that and be able to tap back into who I was. You know what I'm saying? I went to the same studio I used to record back in Atlanta. I was with the same people that engineered everything. I had my whole team in the, in the room and everything like that. So it was a, it was a whole vibe. It literally was the party that it felt like it was on the song. Again, it, they were like, make a song about yourself. I needed more people to feel what it feel like to be Carly Robin than just hear about me, talk about me. That's what I was going for. So it just kind of hit. Goddamn. That actually leads me uh, down an interesting path here because uh, I want to talk about your background with hip hop. Okay. You know, wh- when did you get started making music? Oh, Jesus. I mean, I'm, I'm from New York in the 90s. Mm-hmm. I started making music when I was a kid. We was rapping in, in basements and rapping in stairwells and rapping at lunch tables and people banging on the lunch table and stuff like that. Uh, professionally, professionally, like for real, I got into music when I got the military. Maybe 2000 and like 11, you know, I was like, uh, I got out the military and I didn't know what else to do. I was an infantry Marine. You know, I needed to figure out something to keep my time going and what better way to do that than to do something you're passionate about. So I started rapping. And I found out I was really, really good at it. I used that to open the doors that I would further walk through going forward. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got found to do this through rapping and going around you know, to, to even start getting arrested. So it was, it was it, again, it was interesting. It was real cool. I mean, shoot, I've been rapping forever. So Mikey, question for you, because I know that we had a couple talent on the first volume of the album kind of participate in this one. We've got Carly, we've got Swerve. So how important was it for you to get talent involved from like, on the microphone perspective for this album? For me, authenticity is always first and foremost. And having AEW talent that can actually put their descriptive words into the music themselves, it just gives it that much more authenticity to it. I always live by the standard of never trying to shoehorn anyone into anything. You know, we get approached all the time about different ideas and people wanting to do certain things. And for me, it's always tone, cadence, delivery, and vibe. And from the, the overall producer, Rich Lada, to the other artists that came in, to the actual talent that we have that's performing on the track, having all of these pieces come together and not shoehorning them in, but letting them find their pocket was very important to me because overall it's about authenticity and it's about the expression of the culture itself. So I am super excited to have Carly on it. I'm super excited to have Swerve on it. It makes the overall project just that much more important and that much more meaningful meaningful and personal. So last week, we were joined by Trisha Dora here on the show. Okay. Mm. And, okay. and of course, she she was putting you over. She was putting over Sean. She was putting over just the fact that the, the camaraderie between you three is, is so authentic. And I, I want to kind of follow up on that. The true relationship between how much you guys support each other and how much that relationship means to you guys. I kind of want to hear that from your perspective. Mm -hmm. I just want a second to talk about the infantry and what that means to you. Well, I appreciate that. We are, in all sense of the word, family. Where there's one, there's always three. Y'all know that. If y'all, y'all, you see us all the time. Will, you see us. You never see one of us without the others. Nope. We're always together, right? That's important, and you need that, not only in this industry, but in life. 
you know, again, we kind of all understand where each other is coming from, where each other is at. We're all from, not to be funded from impoverished areas. We all went to the military. You know, we all have wild family dynamics. You know what I'm saying? And somehow through all of that, we found each other in wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Not only in wrestling, but at AEW. It was a wild series of events for us all to even get together that that un- we just really appreciate. And because of that, it caused us to always just get to know each other. You be with these people all the time. You know, me and Captain, over the last you know, five, six years, have developed such a friendship and a brotherhood and a camaraderie. Trish came in and she fit like a puzzle piece Mm. and it's important like that that what you see is what you get with us that friendship to me means more to me than anything because you need people in this industry like that that aren't just your friends when the lights are on they're also your friends you know what i'm saying behind the curtain and everything like that and in real life like real life family you need people like that we're like vin diesel and fast and furious like we really really we really about family with this thing you know and uh like you said, like the gra- things like that, like it's small to people. They got Trish on this situation. It's not a, it's not a publicity thing. Like we always with Trish. Trish always with us. For a minute, it was like, hey, we're the infantry. It's not the infantry and Trish and Nora. That was a big, big thing. And, that, and now they don't say anything about that. The infantry's Trish and Dora. The infantry's Bad News and Tattoos. The infantry's Carly Bravo. Like the infantry is to the stands, but we're freaking family. And that's important for us, you know, just just to have that locked in and hold each other down and build each other up so each other can move forward and stuff like that. Like that's real, real life for us. Love it. Awesome. Oh my God. I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait to hear the track, especially after the way that Mikey put it over. I'm I'm hey, so man, stoked. It's be your song. I promise you it's gonna be your favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. You're not wrong. I don't think there's ever been a point where you've been wrong. <laughs> this is awesome. We've been talking to Mikey Ruckus and Carly Bravo here on AEW Unrestricted. And coming up, we have producer Rich Lotta. Yeah. Give it a moment of silence. To the back talkers on the turncoats. Any industry dreamers that's told no. We deliver and fire deserve smoke. And on that note, if you're down here, then we all float. Like paper mache make it still vote. So we clown on the nations who don't vote. Welcome back to AEW Unrestricted. It's Will and Aubrey, and we're talking who we are, a celebration of excellence, volume two. Uh, Mikey Rockets has been here all show, but as mentioned earlier, uh, we are joined by a man who served as producer on this album, a man who I've become very familiar with and great friends with over the last few years. Uh, our first, I think it was Revolution, no, 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 it was Double or Nothing 2021, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Double or Nothing 2021. Yeah. Uh, but it is Rich Lotta. Rich, thanks for being here. Oh, man. Uh, pleasure to be here. Longtime listener of the show. Ooh. And, uh, you know, very happy to uh, talk about a project that I uh, put a lot of myself into uh, not only the first volume, but or the second volume, but the first one as well. That's right. And, and with the first one, I recall there being th- that one you really got to, to learn a lot. And I, I recall the the variations on the Jade Cargill track, things like that, and things that had to change. But you really got to dive into kind of new experiences and new genres. Yeah, that that part was pretty cool because I kind of came in kind of at the last minute. I think on the last one, uh, like I, I don't think I was on the original list. It was a uh, big shout out to Montezzi. He's like, "Yo, can I get my boy Rich? You know, to, to produce something." So uh, I just made a couple tracks and sent them in. There was one of them I just sent a verse on, like the Nyla song. So I was like, you know, the worst thing they can do is, is say, hey, man, uh, we're not going to use it, but I might as well just, you know, send it over. So I, I think a big thing that helped open Mikey's eyes, at least, you know, to look to me in the future was some of the beat breakdown videos I did uh, for some of the the Jade song, the, the remade reggae version uh, with Anthony King and, and Montezzi and, and Reg and. It, it, it was really fun uh, to work on work on those songs and really just, you know, kind of display what I you know can make. And big shout out to Phil Lindsay. He wrote a, a column on Bleacher Report at the time and he embedded all those videos. So I don't know who, who saw that. Someone did. And I'm back here in you know full force. Mikey, uh, I want to ask you, uh, what made you decide that Rich was the guy for this project? So it's always a combination of things. So I, I have been a big proponent that when the time is right, we pull the trigger and start putting together a talent bench. Every place that I've worked previously, I've always looked to who's the next in line, who can come up and and be the next one to even possibly go on to do bigger and better things than me. That's always been my way. And uh, I've been surveying the landscape since I joined AEW in 2019, working with Rich on a couple of occasions, not just uh, who we are. He delivered some verses on Marina Shafir's theme. On top of talent, there's just a vibe. 
there's a vibe and there's a great attitude. The vibe of, of being teachable is one of the things that, that I always look at. Rich carries all of those qualities. And Rich, I'm going to put you over for a little bit. Oh, all right? well, let me get out of the that. way. <laughs> <laughs> Rich is extremely versatile. We get people that we encounter all the time in this business that says, I'm the guy for this. I'm the guy for that. I can do this. I can do that. 99% of the time when they get the light cast on them to do what you need them to do, a lot of times it doesn't exactly happen the way they've talked themselves up. Rich was extremely humble and he never really, he didn't overtly put himself out there. Just being able to work with him and get the vibe that these guys going places. <laughs> That's kind of the vibe that I got. Not, you know, and, and I'm, I'm looking at a couple of other people as well, but Rich really stood out to me for this project. Again, like I was saying earlier, uh, I'm a big proponent of culture representing itself. Denzel Washington had a, a really good quote in an interview where he talked about Martin Scorsese and he talked about Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg directed Schindler's List, Martin Scorsese, Goodfellas. Either one of them could have could have directed the other films and it would have been great. But having those two individuals direct those films in particular, it was about the culture. And having somebody to come in and really just give an overall arc to this project. That whole thing, by the way, turned out to be like a knock on Amistad, right? Because uh, cause Steven Spielberg <laughs> ended up directing that. Uh, and it was like, you probably could have gotten a black director for that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And, it, you know, it, it, it made sense to me the first time I heard it. And it was something that I took with me. And when, when uh, we started to come up with this idea originally, I instantly was drawn back to that in my mind. And I said, you know, we could drop beats and we can drop different productions all day long. But for really... This particular project, I needed to kind of step back and oversee, help put up some guardrails and and uh, how we produce things in AEW and just kind of let Rich create, do his thing, interact with the other artists that we brought in and just really give him the opportunity to create. Okay, so question, uh, and mind you, I'm asking this from a perspective of I'm I work in wrestling. I know nothing about music production, so I'm I'm really curious as to how the collaboration process works between Mikey and Rich with everyone else involved with the project, like with specific wrestlers. Like, how do you even pick which wrestlers you want to feature? How do you give people different sorts of reign? Like, we've got the track with Carly and Swerve that are just, you know, them highlighting their skills. And then we've got other tracks with other people. How does this whole process work from a collaboration standpoint? I'll jump in there first and then Rich can follow up uh, for sure. I had mentioned it before. There's certain tone cadence and delivery that you feel kind of matches up with talent. And a lot of times that's what happens when we create our entrance themes. You want to make sure that the right people are in the right spot for the job. And I had a basic idea of who I wanted to be where, but then again, I just kind of let Rich come in and do his thing. If he had people that he thought would work in separate things. So it was kind of like the same vibe, just allowing him to do the same thing. And I was only there if there needed to be some adjustments or uh, there needed to be something like redone or, Hey, we can, we, can we mix this a little bit differently? But I let him kind of do his thing. He was the cook in the kitchen and I was just expediting the orders. So that's, I guess that's the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Like for me, how, how I kind of looked at it, like we had like a list of the uh, talent that were going to be, you know, involved in a project. So I had, you know, worked on, you know, a lot of instrumentals for it. And I was like, all right, who do I see? Either even Stephen Smith, for example, referee, Aubrey, very familiar with him. Mm -hmm. When I saw, you know, his his thing, I'm like, all right, he's not a wrestler or anything, but how do I come up with music that would fit him? So I was like, let's just make it real, you know, swaggy, real, real floss. Don't you want to sound rich? Can't kill me out of water fries. I'm too official. They trying to take my call and I can't hear the phone clicking. They tapping in and trying to trap me with them low signals. Don't like the interference. I just wish your whole system. Look at how my sights, all these lights and my stripes, all legit. Paid the price, counting fights. One, two, three, that's a pin. One, two, three, count them out for the win. One, two, three, count them out. I basically assigned like all the instrumentals essentially to the vibe I was looking for of the wrestler. Like, for example, like Swerve is like very in your face. I was like, all right, we're going to give him some some drill essentially and just like let him go. Carly Bravo, high energy. So uh, I was like, yeah, I think that would be good for him. <laughs> um, Willow Nightingale, uh, her song Bay with the Power, which I'm actually, um, you know, rapping on uh, with uh, Josiah Williams and Victor Perry. 
that one's just more like it's it's laid back, but it's also aggressive at the same time. So I'm really trying to match Queen Emanata, for example. The instrumental that I made for her is actually like basically me remaking uh, Dedication by Nipsey Hussle off memory. <laughs> That's where I was going with it. I don't know if it exactly fit it, but I was like, it has this very regal sounding, you know, feel to it. I was like, I think that'll be for Queen Emanata. And then, you know, I use, you know, basically my thoughts on who I thought should go on specific songs. Um, there, were, there were new people that are on this album that uh, weren't on the last one. I happened to you know bring a couple of those folks in and thought they could contribute similarly to the way I got brought in. So it, it was really cool to work in conjunction like with Mikey. Like, hey, this is who you know. The, these are the beats you pick. The artist who go who goes where, and then I'll just coordinate and speak with the artists. And everyone turned out to be really cool. Talking about how this process, how you got to control a bit of this process and get to bring other people in. Uh, it's fascinating because of the fact that, you know, you have been kind of Swerve's go to producer for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But in the way that you got acquainted with Swerve was kind of in the same vein that you were working on this process, no? So I kind of got uh, affiliated with Swerve through Montezzi. Mm -hmm. My boy. I, I did a shout out to Montezzi. I did a interview on uh, my buddy Floyd's podcast. Montezzi had a song about Cody that was out that he mm -hmm. liked. So he he's a big Cody fan. So he was like, yeah, I want to interview this rapper. I don't know really anything about music. Rich, will you come on here with me? And then... Uh, I found out that I live 20 minutes away from Montezzi. And, you know, sometimes you're speaking the same language as someone essentially like, oh, we're going to talk after this. He gave me Swerve's number. Apparently Swerve wanted to learn how to make beats at that time. I sent him a text message on Monday. I was at his house by Friday and then we were linking up. I was like, all right, look, either I can show you how to make beats or like, like, what do you really want to do? And then a couple of <laughs> weeks later, it turned into me, you know, basically producing like, 10 songs for their album GPS. And, you know, we've been rocking ever since. Damn, man, this is so cool. I love that. Like there's just these worlds that are so massive, but at the same time, so small and interconnected and everyone just knows everyone and it all creates amazing magical moments. And I'm, oh man, I'm so happy. Yeah. We heard a little bit earlier when we were talking with Mikey and our other guests on this show, kind of like the tracks that he's most excited about rich, which tracks on this album stand out to you as sort of your favorites. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up again. Uh, the Stefan Smith uh, song mm. uh, by Anthony King and Shokas Apollo. I think it is such a creative concept because it's like, all right, you're not rapping about, you're not going to get Will Nightingale. You, do, you didn't get Swerve. Swerve's going to rap his own theme. So you're going to be as creative as possible to still highlight this person, but do it in a creative way. I think Anthony King, like basically with the with the concept of the chorus and the, and the verses with, with Shokas Apollo, they ripped it. Like, I, I think it's just one of the more creative songs on the project. Carly Bravo's, like, Bad News and Tattoos, I think people are going to be very excited. That's about mine. That. That's mine right there. Bravo in the building. What they do? <laughs> yeah. I can't help it, man. You just gotta, you gotta jump up. So, I'm, yeah. I'm an old man. I can't do it like the kids do these days, but it's all good. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. Like, in between the last guest and this one, we had a little bit of time, and I went for a run, and I just had that shit on loop. I was like, yeah, we end up doing it. like it was so good. <laughs> yeah. And I think like a big, you know, thing that I like to highlight in my production style are like the drums. I want to make sure the drums are really hitting hard and I want to make sure the bass is like coming in like proper. And I, I think there's, you know, uh, Athena has a song on here where it's like, all right, when I think of Athena, I don't necessarily think about hip hop, but what if we did? That's kind of what we did. Flash Garments is actually on that track yeah. too. Flash yeah. Garments is the one who was on uh, Swerve's interest theme as well. So. Garments. I love it. Garments. I, love, yeah, I love that we get to see uh, the synergy between our, our talent as well. So that's also really cool. And uh, I've just been really excited about this album as a whole. I think that the first one uh, was such an ambitious project. And, and again, getting to be a part of the first one and, and being a part of that process. And I remember how nerve wracking it was just getting everything together. I remember, Mikey, I sent you the uh, instrumental for red velvet's theme at like two o'clock in the morning uh because i had literally been up all night just like is this right is it right i don't know and then she comes back she's like i love this and uh and it, it, it was amazing to see how much the talent really appreciated it and that's where i was going with all this that to see how much it spoke to the talent how much they loved this music and that's what i am hoping to see 
this next one bring about? And already just getting to talk with certain stars. Like I mentioned earlier in the show, I mentioned how, you know, Willow, I watched her face as she heard her song for the first time. Really? And, oh, yeah, I, and, I, and, I, yeah. I haven't talked to her yet, so I'd be, I'd be interested. Uh, I would love to see what, what she thinks of it. Honestly, it's it's always amazing when people get to hear themselves immortalized in music and who we are is another opportunity to get to do that. And I, this has just been a really cool project. And I'm really proud of all you guys for getting to put this together this time mm-hmm. around. It, it was my pleasure, like being a part of it, like and uh, working with Mikey is always like amazing. Whenever like I, I look down and it's like Mikey Ruckus AEW, I'm like, all right, let's get it. We, we're gonna, <laughs> we, we got a couple more things coming that are that are, you know, in the pipeline. And hopefully, you know, we got a part three on this. There's a lot. Cause, cause, you know, stand for, you know, some songs, you know, to get made about them. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. Oh, I love it. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm just so freaking like excited for this album. Like it's out today on all the streaming platforms. Please listen to it. It's incredible. There's a lot of incredible artists on it. Lots of different sounds, lots of different beats. Like it's just a mix of culture, but also just all of the amazing AEW talent is on this album is so represented in such a positive way. And I'm so, I feel like you guys hit it out of the park with volume one and there's no way that volume two could be better. And then of course it's like, nah, you were wrong. Volume two totally kicks ass. This is great. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Download it now. Listen to the album. It's great. You can listen to this podcast on all of your favorite podcast platforms, AEW Unrestricted, available Thursday. Video on our is available on Mondays on our YouTube channel. Watch Dynamite Wednesdays on TBS. Rampage, TNT on Fridays. Collision, TNT on Saturdays. And then, of course, watch Ring of Honor on Thursdays on Honor Club. I am Aubrey Edwards with Will Washington. Definitely download Who We Are Volume 2. Listen to it. Oh my God, I cannot, re- I, I could literally just repeat this over and over again. You will not dis- be disappointed. Peace out. See ya. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. I'm just-